Hello and welcome. My name is Manuel Cantana. And today I'm going to take the time and opportunity to talk to you about recent updates for fabric data engineering. Specifically, we're going to be talking about data flows gen two. There was a recent event just a week or two ago since the time of this recording, where there was a lot of announcements, a lot of preview elements, and a lot of things that were actually brought into general availability around Dataflows Gen 2. So either if you are using the tool already, so you can be up to date with what you can now take advantage of. Some of these are great. Some, some of them are pretty simple as far as just they're cheaper now. We'll talk about that. Or maybe you haven't been using them, right? Maybe earlier on there were some things that were missing, some features that were there. Maybe you weren't liking the impact it had on your capacity, right? Looking at through the metrics app anything really, right? Dataflows Gen 2 is, is really meant to be that UI driven experience, that user interface driven experience for ETL inside of Fabric, right? It allows you to connect to a various amount of sources, transform the data, taking advantage of Power Query, and then eventually landing that data in some sort of destination, which that list of destinations has actually increased as well as one of these changes. So it is definitely the most direct, I guess, translation for those coming from a Power BI background into Fabric, right? Because it's Power Query. If you were using Dataflows Gen 1, then you know for the most part Dataflows Gen 2, the only difference is now you can move that data to a destination. If you weren't using Dataflows Gen 1, maybe you were just using Power BI and importing stuff into the semantic model, the Power Query editor, you know this, right? So let's just start with the conversation. So over here, you can see I'm just inside of a workspace. I've got a Dataflow Gen 2, and we're going to go ahead and open that up. And the first thing we're going to be discussing here is, right, the way we work with this is, of course, you can see right now it's taking its time, it's loading, and it's making the connection to whatever my source is, which we have a ton of options for that. And it's kind of showing this preview of data. And of course, as you go through, you can see in this case, I don't have a ton of options here as far as, you know, preview steps and or sorry, steps that are being done here. So of course, you might have a massive list of adjustments that you're doing, removing columns, adding columns, you know, going ahead and doing some custom columns there, which is leveraging the expression language, rows, merging, appends, whatever. That's the beautiful piece. There's tons of options in this engine. That's the idea why it's so good for transformational capability, right? Well, one of the things that for authorship purposes, so this is just a feature meant for the design and authorship of this. It doesn't actually affect like the actual scheduled execution, but this is all about helping out with the data preview pane. This is a feature that's called preview only steps, right? And you can see if I right click a transform, there's an option in this list that says enable only in previews. And if I go ahead and select it, you can see it becomes italicized and there's a little indication there in gray that this is now in play right? The idea here is this is going to evaluate each transformation independently to ensure, you know, accurate previews to your scenario. However, rendering this full schema and data values can sometimes take seconds, minutes even. So the idea behind this is that within this preview element, it's going to basically use the sample data from what we have here to render the results. So this is an authorship only experience, right? It's only affecting you here, obviously not going to have an impact when you actually run this as far as what's going to get loaded in. As you can expect, of course, it's going to run through every single one of the steps that you are kind of specifying here. But this is just going to speed up that development process, right? Whether you're doing complex transforms or just exploring new data sources, this preview only capability is going to help you just stay focused, responsive and efficient. And it's not going to compromise your refresh integrity. That's the first kind of thing real quick that we're going to look at here at the surface level. That should be noted that this little accelerator that we're seeing here, it's limited to certain sources. I know we have Azure Data Lake Gen 2, SharePoint files, if you're connecting to an on-prem local file system, and a couple of others, but you're more than likely going to see this appear in more and more areas. As mentioned, you can simply just right-click, you can go ahead and hit uh, Enable Previews Only, and you can do that. There also is going to be an option that if you end up using the combined data operation, you'll also see that the combined files, you'll also see a new little wheel there that says basically that you can do this in a preview only state, right? So definitely there, you can see I'm in the, the, the region of this capacity is of course, North Central. So of course, these things roll out region by region. If you don't see it, maybe it'll be there shortly. But like I said, these are all fresh, new, hot off the press. Another performance related item that we have here, of course, is called the Modern Query Evaluation Engine, right? It's basically just an enhancement to just improve the performance of query evaluation. It's something that you can turn on. This is going to be both in traditional Dataflows Gen 2 and also the ones that are set up for CICD, which is the one we're looking at now. If this does look maybe slightly different from yours, there's just small nuances like the save and run option because this is a CICD enabled data flow, right? 
But in here, of course, you can go right into the options tab where there have already been some scale options. So it's not a new section. It's under scale. You can see there's now a query evaluation. This allows the use of modern query engines. You simply turn this on and you will get a little bit of an acceleration and performance, but it's only at the moment limited to certain connectors. At the moment, it's already available here for Azure Blob Storage, Azure Data Lake Storage, Lake Houses, Warehouses, OData, Power Platform, Data Flows, SharePoint, and Web Connector. So this at the moment, just a nice way to enhance performance, is only available for those connections. Uh, the documentation online, of course, if you go here and click learn, learn more, it'll take you there. So as this, you know, eventually has more and more support for more connectors, that will be made visible here. But literally just check it on. If you're leveraging one of those sources, you get just simply some enhanced performance, just straight up. And actually, you know, while we're there in that scale section, we might as well keep this up because there's another option readily available right above it called Partitioned Compute also in preview here, but this is really going to be another option basically to enhance performance to allow for enabling parallel execution. Those are good words to have to enhance performance, and it's going to actually significantly reduce evaluation time for these data flows gen two, right? This is going to be amazing for handling large file sets, especially for those as well, the support of connections for like ADLS Gen 2, Azure Data Lake Gen 2, where you might have already partitioned parquet files because that's how you've set it up. You might have 10, 12 different parquets that effectively are meant, has all the data for a singular table, if you will. You can turn this on and it'll actually kind of go through and leverage those partitions uh, because it'll automatically partition these sources and it evaluates each one concurrently, right? So you can just flip that switch. It'll handle all this in the background. Once again, this is only going to be for ADLS Gen 2, Lake Houses, folder option. If you are having that, if you have like those partitioned items in the folder section of a lake house, that'll function too. Uh, and then traditional blob storage. So just another checkbox if you're leveraging these sources that you can get that nice enhanced performance. Speaking about kind of the performance, another thing to kind of keep in mind is cost. As we were talking about that there's been some changes here in performance, there's actually been a really nice um, element here in regards to kind of a two-tier, I think they're referring to this as a two-tier pricing element when it comes to Dataflows Gen 2. And we're going to see that if we, there's nothing to kind of view here, but if we were to bring up the documentation, there's actually been a reduction in the cost around Dataflows Gen 2 in regards to kind of the flat overall capacity units expenditure here. And then also when you have maybe more long running data flows gen two, it also has an another tier of reduced cost and impact, which at the end of the day, whether we're running pipelines, whether we're running notebooks, right? We're consuming capacity units, right? So we want to work and be as efficient as possible. And this is going to just put data flows in a better spot where for, I know some of you, you were looking at the usage of data flows gen two and you weren't that satisfied. So right off the bat, for the first 10 minutes of query evaluation, you're now built at a flat 12 CU, which this is a 25% reduction from previous rates beyond 10 minutes. So for those longer running queries, costs can drop up to one point, like down to 1.5 capacity units, which is actually a 90% reduction, making those longer, more extended operations significantly more budget friendly. So just things to keep an eye out. It's, it, this is just there. This is just a thing. So if you're using data flows already, it's just some a benefit that you're going to receive as an enhancement for this, which is just nice. And of course, other small things, as I said, for updates in this engineering space, we have, of course, Copilot integrated directly in here, which can help with the creation of calculated columns, right? You can go in there, it can assist with that using kind of that generative AI. We also have the ability for explaining elements. So you can right click any of your steps and you can have it explain the step. Of course, this follows the standard options where you need to have, you know, you can't use this for fabric trials. You need a capacity which is eligible for Copilot, but you can hit explain the step. And of course, it's just going to go through and kind of explain. So you can see, just make your choice and it'll return that response for you. Another element that we have in relation to Copilot, of course, is going to be this option for what's called a MGD, right? This is going to be an option when we go in and just go to get data we can get this new experience for connecting to data. That's the idea. So all you need to do is connect into by hitting get data. We're going to see there's going to be a copilot tab over here. And this is going to give us this experience here to go through and get, it's called the modern get data experience. 
and it would show you your most recent tables you've been working with. And then you can just start using dialogue inside of Copilot to kind of make, get your connections going. So just integration, as we've seen, Copilot is finding its way place into so many different places inside of Fabric as we would expect, taking advantage of that AI to kind of assist us in that process of, in this case, developing our data flows to meet whatever demands and needs we might have for it, right? Another small thing, because I said there's so many cool changes that are going on here, uh, kind of two-part aspect of it. We have a schema support that is available now for warehouses. Now, when we look up the change online, the schema detection, the schema support, it is does state lake houses, fabric DB, and warehouses at the moment. And I'll show you this right now. It seems only the warehouse has been rolled out. Uh, and what we refer to is, right, warehouses obviously have schema support. You go through, you leverage it. As far as navigation, right, when you went in and looked at your warehouse and you explored, you know, it was a little bit difficult managing that hierarchy. It wasn't showing up. As the same can be actually be said for a lake house. For instance, if I go here to this destination, I go to set a new destination, which just in case another change here, Azure Data Lake Storage, we have SQL database here, external one. And there is also, it hasn't made its way into my region yet, but there is going to be a preview option for Snowflake, right? So you can now write your destination to, let's say a CSV out in blob storage or something like that. And also you'll be able to write out to Snowflake. The Snowflake isn't present at the moment, but it is, was released, kind of those notes in the documentation was announced at the event itself, right? Over at FabCon Vienna. But as I was mentioning here, the idea is, oh, I'm going to connect to a lake house. And when we go through and we make this connection, this navigational experience here, if you're using, let's say, lake house schemas, wasn't really effective, right? If you went in here and you went and looked at one of these items, so in my case, one that would have it, I can go into this lake house and all I have is the lake house itself, right? I don't see if these are part of DBO schema, sales schema, I guess you see here. So that's missing, but there is, and this is the lake house. And I imagine this feature should be coming soon because it's listed in the documentation. There's meant to be a new option. When you choose to connect to that lake house, we should see the same option we see for the warehouse here which when we now connect to the warehouse, there's an advanced options tab and you can say navigate using full hierarchy and you simply hit this to true. And when you go through this, you can actually explore and see all the different schemas that you want available to you inside of the warehouse in question that you end up pointing to, right? So we can go in here, point on this lake house and in this expansion, and this is what we're expecting to see also for the lake house, we can see all the various options here as far as like the schema exploration, right? This one doesn't actually, you can see DBO. I don't think I actually have a new schema, but it would show here, right? So that's exciting. You know, we've had that kind of schema element in warehouses since the get-go, but obviously lake house schemas is in preview. So it's nice to finally, hopefully soon, see data flows have that capability of actually being able to write. Because at the moment, if you have a schema, you can't write to it, um, which is obviously a little bit problematic, right? But new destinations, new schema support, and actually also there is an option here. If you're going to go to a lake house at the moment, you can also take advantage of incremental refresh, right? So you'll see if you do have a table in question, there is a classic option for incremental refresh. Nope, this, this table doesn't support it. But if we go over here, this dim product should have a column here. You can see it's a very classical display of what we know, have known since the Power BI days, right? Power BI incremental refresh was there. You kind of turn it on. You go ahead and pick a column that's of a date time timestamp, and you can just kind of set your range of what we want this incremental refresh to be. So this could be obviously great for efficiency when we're managing large data sets. This can make that just that much more efficient. It'll obviously make for faster processing just to optimize. Once again, making the most of the capacities that we provision for our organization, right? Because this is the, the limit of what we have to expend every month. We don't want to be hitting that and forcing us to scale up. We want to use these features as efficiently as possible against those capacity units. So, I mean, just a ton of changes when it comes to data flows. You know, one of the biggest ones I said, if you've been using it or if you've not, right? If you've been using it though, you just got a decrease on CU usage across the board, 25% flat on everything. And if you have more longer running operations, which remember we can get into things like preview only elements, we could get into potentially the modern query where we can get the faster query analysis there. A lot of really cool enhancements that we can dip into to once again, just make the usage of these data flows into that much more efficient and that much more of an option for us to lean into in our overall kind of data landscape that is Fabric, right? Use this as the enterprise scale ETL tool that it's meant to be. Obviously, the next big event as time is recording is going to be, I think it's going to be in March of 2026. 
This is Fabcon Atlanta. And I imagine once again, just a robust amount of changes. So I'll be looking to do maybe a couple of other updates to this around potentially pipelines and other elements that have received updates. But once again, check out the Fabric blog. It's a massive list of updates and changes that came from the September event for Fabric Con Vienna. We'll keep putting out some items to keep you in the know, but that next big one with tons of changes, Atlanta, March 2026 Fabcon. They will see you there. I hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.